do better than that. Amen. For he is good. Amen. Well, thank you to him and to all of those that are in our physical sanctuary. Amen. Those are in our cyber sanctuary where they're watching us live or watching the replay. We thank God for you on tonight. Amen. This is unusual. Amen. But I believe that. Amen. This uh, should be usual to have a Wednesday night evangelistic service. Amen. Amen. Where we can have a recharge and a refuel. Amen. Uh, as it relates to the things of God on tonight. So we thank God for all of our disciples uh, amen, that are worshiping with us. Amen. Those in their respective places. Won't go through protocol at this point in time, but we'll uh, say God bless you to everyone under the sound of my voice. Amen. So our service on today, or this evening rather, will be a little uh, out of the ordinary because this is not a Sunday worship service. Amen. This is an evangelistic service. And so we don't have to go through, amen, some of the procedures that we may go through, amen, or preliminaries that we may go through through a Sunday worship service. But nonetheless, amen, we want to make sure that we have an encounter. Every time we go live, we want to have an encounter with the Lord. Amen. amen. We want to, amen. We want to. Somebody came to meet Jesus on tonight. Amen. I think that someone came, amen, not because someone told you to come, but because you, you knew in your heart, amen, you want to meet Jesus on tonight. Amen. And if you want to meet him, you're in the right place at the right time. Amen. And so we thank God for his spirit. Amen. For the Lord is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So we thank God for all things. We're going to ask if we all would stand. Those are in our physical sanctuary. We're going to stand this time. We'll uh, go ahead with our uh, opening prayer. Amen. And after the prayer, amen, we'll go over a few things. And amen. That the, allow the praise team, amen, to come back. Amen. And bless us. And we're going to get everything, the offering, everything out of the way. Amen. So that we can come back with the word of God and we'll release you. Amen. In the time of fashion, if the Lord say the same. Amen. If we say something different, amen, we can't tell the Lord what to do. Amen. But as we go to, Father, to God in prayer, Father, we just thank you for this another day that you have made. And we're rejoicing and we're glad in it. God, we thank you for this opportunity, God, knowing that it could have been, it would have been, it should have been the other way. But we thank you for grace and we thank you for mercy. God, we thank you for things been as well as they are. God, now that we're gathered in this house, in your name, we come to worship you. We come to magnify you. We came to lift your name up for your name is great. And greatly to be praised. God, we had 10,000 tongues. We couldn't say thank you enough. So, God, we pause right now, oh God, in the midst of this service and say thank you. Thank you, God, for how you brought us over, brought us through. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. God, we thank you for being, oh God, our present help in the time of trouble. And God, we ask that, Lord, you will bless the furtherance of this service. Oh God, put your stamp of approval on this service on tonight. Those that are under the sound of my voice, whether they are in the physical sanctuary, whether they're watching live, whether they're watching the replay, let your word go forth that somebody will be encouraged, somebody will be healed, someone will be delivered, somebody will be set free in the name of Jesus. It's not about us, but it's all about you, God. Move us out of the way that God, you get the glory, that you get the honor, that you get the praise. And God, we bow, oh God, to not take the credit, but we'll give it all to you, telling the world that you did it. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on this evening. Again, we thank God for all things. At this time, what we'll do is, amen, we're we'll prepared to give unto the Lord. So we're going to prepare to give unto the Lord before we give, amen. Uh, one, uh, I know before our trustees come, we want to go over a few uh, things here, amen, on tonight. A few things here we want to go over, and that is uh, by way of, so we'll cover the basics so our secretary won't have to do any observations. We'll cover, amen, and just, uh, they know how I work. If I forget something, you give me a suggestion, uh, we'll, we'll go from there. But certainly by way of reminders, amen, that we want all of our disciples and our guests to know, amen, that on Saturday, July the 31st, and I'm jumping Sunday, but Saturday, Saturday, July 31st from 11 to 4 p.m., 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., we will be here at the church having, amen, our first annual fun day. And with that, and when we're pushing that forward to invite your, your children, to invite, amen, amen, your nieces, your nephews, amen, invite your cousin, your auntie, uh, whoever else, amen, uh, to be a part of this uh, event, amen. We're going to have inflatables for our children, amen. We're going to have vendors, amen, as well. We have popcorn vending, we have snow cone vending, we also have, uh, I say funnel cake, we almost had that, amen, but we also have the cotton candy vending areas, and we also have, again, uh, uh, some uh, important things uh, as it relates to our uh, fellowship hall, so we have some things, but 
materials uh, where some can shop if you desire. Uh, there'll be some representatives that'll be from our town that'll be here as well, and we'll have food. Amen. So we're asking that you would, amen, uh, be a part. And we're going to have hot dogs. We're going to have hamburgers. We're going to have chicken. We're going to have uh, uh, chop, uh, turkey barbecue, amen, and all the fixings, amen, uh, for this. We want to make this a bit great, amen, not because uh, we're so great, but because we love each and every one of you. And I believe that everything that we've gone through over the past year and a half, we just need to, that word in scripture, sometimes we read it, but it's not really meant to be read. That word, see law. It means to pause, stop, think about it. And that's what we want to do on that Saturday. We don't want to, amen, whatever problems you have, amen, we don't want you to be unrealistic. But when you enter, the, enter on our grounds, amen, uh, just take the time to just love on those who we can love on. Uh, so, yeah, amen. We, we don't know, amen, when our next time will be. And so we invite everybody. Uh, to this event, amen, so that you will be a part. Uh, we want the food to run out, amen. We want food, amen, that's what we want, amen. We want our children to be tired so that when you get your children at home, you can get them in the shower, amen, and then put them in the bed. Come, hello, somebody, amen. So with, with that being said, we're looking forward to July the 31st. At least I know that's what me and my wife will do, amen. Y'all know how to do You got children, wear them out. Get them about, amen, and then you put them to bed and they'll sleep real good, amen. But uh, with that being stated, we invite everyone out July the 31st from 11 to 4 p.m. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, put it on your calendars. Also, in addition to that, on this Sunday, part of the reason why we have an evangelistic service on tonight is because this Sunday uh, we'll be traveling to Greensville, South Carolina, to be with Pastor Courtney Adams on his fourth pastoral anniversary celebration. Amen. And I know that some of us are not able to go due to obligations and other things. Amen. But uh, certainly, uh, I spoke with him on today, and he is excited about us coming. Amen. I know everyone can't come, but a portion of us are going. So be in prayer as we travel on Saturday. Amen. Some may come back on Sunday. Uh, some may come back on Monday. But uh, we're, this is why we're not having service on Sunday, because we're tra traveling to be with him on Sunday uh, at uh, 10 a.m. Is, is what time the service starts. So uh, we thank God for Pastor Adam. He's a dear brother. A dear brother and friend of our ministry so we thank God for him uh, also by way of announcements on August the 21st uh, the 21st and the 22nd are significant dates for us here at the Grove that will be our youth weekend so on that 21st amen we are pushing and uh, now uh, we did have a sign up sheet for Wet and Wild Emma Point that uh, registration on that sign-up sheet is now closed, amen, and so we're working now to make sure that we secure, uh, so if you didn't sign your child up, amen, we had ample enough time, amen, to do that, and so we want to make sure that we do it uh, and go in a, a large way, uh, but if you still desire to go, uh, catch us there in Greensboro, but nonetheless, uh, we're going to, so all of this is we're trying to push, amen, to make sure that everyone feels a part of Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Our seniors feel apart as well as our young people and our uh, bridge builders is what I call you. If you're in between, you do a bridge builder. Amen. Bridging the gap between our youth and our seniors. Amen. So uh, if you would bear those dates in mind, let's be in prayer for some of our saints uh, that are under the weather. Some are just going through. Uh, let's be in prayer for those that we know to call and some that we don't know to call. Amen. We thank God. Let me just say this. Uh, Brother uh, Nicholas McCullough is with us on tonight. We know that. Amen. Let's give him a hand. Now, I'm announcing him, uh, or uh, giving, uh, speaking of his name, and certainly he has been phenomenal with our ministry, uh, especially during the pandemic, amen, uh, he and his brothers, uh, but they lost a significant uh, person, uh, his grandfather, who also served as mayor in Holly Springs, uh, Mr. Gerald Holloman, uh, passed, uh, unfortunately, uh, a few weeks ago, and so with that being stated, well, it seemed yeah, a few weeks ago, and so with that being stated, uh, uh, he's here on tonight, and we thank God, uh, we love him, Amen. Well, come on, somebody. Amen. We, amen. 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 That's the good thing about God. Men can love men in God. Men can love men in God. Amen. And so, with that being said, uh, we, we thank God for you, brother. And we're praying for you and your family uh, as you uh, go through this time. Amen. And we're praying for him uh, sincerely. Not only he, but we've had some other. We're praying for our uh, dear sister McCord that she's had uh, some death in her family and others. I don't want to keep calling names, but let's just be in prayer one for another. All right. Amen. At this point in time, we're going to transition, amen, into our offering. Okay, I got a few people that like to do. All right. All right, uh, it's offering time. All right, amen. God bless our music department, and we just thank God for you, brothers. Y'all have been phenomenal. Let's give our band a hand on tonight. 
Amen. You all have been phenomenal. Amen. And along with our praise team and during this pandemic, we thank God for you all for sacrificing your time and your efforts and those uh, here at the road. All right, well, we're going to stand. We're going to ask that my trustee, um, uh, trustee Ray, would ask God's blessing upon uh, the offering on tonight. And uh, we're going to prepare to give. And those that are online, you may give through PayPal, Givelify, or Cash App. Amen. Oak Road NBC Apex is our handle uh, if you desire to give on those platforms. So this time we have the blessing of our offering. God, we just thank you for everything. Father God, we thank you how you woke us up this morning. Amen. Father God, we just ask you to bless these funds as you see fit to bless this kingdom. Father God, we all do in your name. We do praise you. Amen. 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 So if you desire to give to our youth department on tonight, we're doing a special offering for our youth over the next few weeks. If you desire to give to the youth department, you may do so. So into our youth ministry. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to do, amen, because the right side is a little dead favor. We've got four people on the left, and we go on the right. If the right side will stand, amen, in the last row, whichever the, okay, all right, if you would come around, you all remain standing, and you may come around and give, amen. We're going to ask if our musicians as they give us some marching music, amen.
there anybody in here that'll worship him just for him being who he is? Yeah.
doesn't do anything else. He certainly has done more than enough. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. For his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. And it's because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassion fail not. Amen. And do every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. He's a faithful God. Amen. Amen. We thank him, amen, for being faithful, amen, to us. Even when we're not faithful, he's faithful to us, amen. And so we thank him, amen. Certainly, again, we give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and certainly to all of you in your respective places, amen. We thank God again for all things on this evening, amen. We want to say a special, amen, welcome, amen. We don't believe in uh, visitors. We believe that everyone is a guest, amen. You are a part of us today, God, for our guests on tonight. Let's give them a hand. Amen. We thank God for our guests. Amen. We pray that this is, amen, not be your last time worshiping with us. Amen. Amen. Everyone, amen, is welcome here at Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church Apex. Amen. Because God is here. Amen. And so certainly we thank God again for all that uh, pressed away our own tonight. Amen. Uh, from the word of God on tonight. Amen. Uh, let's turn to Psalms 124. Psalms 124. Psalms 124. We'll be reading for your consideration from the King James Version on tonight, Psalms 124. Amen. And we can find that signified by saying amen. And if you would rest upon your feet for the word of God. Psalms 124. Amen. Verses 1 through 8. Amen. Are you there? Yes. Amen. All right. Uh, Psalms 124 from the King James Version says this. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowl. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. And now watch this. Our help is in the name of the Lord, yeah. who made heaven and earth. Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. You may be seated in the presence, from the Lord, uh, presence of the Lord on tonight. Amen. From this passage of scripture, I want to talk to you very simply from this subject. Amen. He a keeper. Yeah. He's a keeper. Uh, listen, the only way that you know that the Lord is a keeper is you had to go through something to know that he kept you in what you were going through. Yeah. Somebody listening to me does not look like the stuff that God pulled you out of. Uh, yeah, because some of us, the fact of the matter is, should have really lost our mind a while ago kicking and screaming in a straight jacket, but we're still here because he's a keeper. Yeah. I don't believe that anybody listening to me would deny the fact that the times that we're living in are not normal times. Uh, are, there's nothing normal about the times that, the, that we're living in now. Something is going on in the spiritual realm and it's bigger than the coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, this is a trying time. Uh, these are times that try your body, uh, your patience, and even your soul. Uh, there's something that is taking place in the spiritual realm, and it didn't just start yesterday. I believe that God has allowed times like the days that we're living in now uh, uh, to reveal to us who we really are, because this is the time of revelation. Uh -huh. These are the times that the preachers of old warned us about. They told us that there was coming a time where we would have to know without hesitation or reservation that we were on the Lord's side. I wish I had some help in this house. Uh, yes, yes. We, 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 uh, there was a time that they talked about we would have to know who we belong to. This is why for those that, uh, uh, that take our salvation seriously, that everything that has happened around us didn't throw us completely off. Uh, this didn't move us out of our foundation because if you read your Bible and have to listen to the word of God, 
God from the preachers of old, this is what they were preparing us for all along. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad that I listened down through the years and, and didn't waste my time in church. Uh -huh. Popping gum and trying to impress, uh, dress to impress. Let me tell you something, saints of God, and I don't mean this in a pious way, but when we come to church, the main reason that we should come is because we need a word from the Lord. Uh, we can talk about where you got your nails done later. We can talk about where you got your hair and your bundles at later. We can talk about where you got your suit from later. We can talk about uh, how much wood could a wood chunk chunk if a wood chunk could chunk wood later. But when I grow up in this house, I need a word from the Lord. Uh, yes, we're in a time in the spiritual realm that is more to this thing than shouting and running around. Uh, yeah, some people don't think that you have a good service unless there's a whole lot of people up shouting. Uh, but let me remind you that the shout is good, amen. No, nobody likes praising them like me, but it's going to take more than just a shout to get you through these times. I love to see the saints shouting and praising God, but there are times where we need to get somewhere and sit down and listen to what is going on in the house of God. Uh, this is this thing is more than a shout and a dance, but there is there must be something on the inside of you that connects you to God. Uh, you got to make sure that you're not just coming, but you're ingesting and digesting that which God has for you. And it's only those that have an appetite for the Word that's been able to make it through all of this stuff that we've been going through. These times that we've been living in for the past. 18 to 18 months. Uh, some people, and it seems like because of what we've been going through, some folks have been dropped on their head. And as a result, a lot of people have walked away from their place of responsibility. There are ones, amen, that really didn't have an understanding of the world. But for those of us that know that God is a keeper, the obstacle that we face didn't run us away. Uh, it didn't call us to run from God, but somebody knows that it called me to run towards God. It caused me to hold on to God tighter than before. You know, you had to have something. Uh, when churches were shutting down and they told us that we could not come together, that won't too long ago. I mean, if we don't watch it with this new strength, this may come around again. Uh, that's why you better come to church as long as you can. I mean, because there may come a chance real soon that we can't come back like we want to. Uh, you know, you had to have something uh, to get up and down on the inside of you when you got people driving on 40 and 95 that'll shoot you and keep on driving. You gotta have, you know you had to have something inside of you when you could be in a parking lot of a hospital, parked in a handicapped space, trip and then get ran over and drugged for 100 feet. I mean, you know that you had to have something when you can be out minding your business and get hit by a bullet while sitting in your car by somebody that you didn't know in the first place. Yes, you know you had to have something when a grown man is accused of, of walking up to an 11 year old in Walmart and trying to unjust or un, uh, undress her from her pants. You know you had to have something uh, that, that, that when the world is going wild you still know how to rest in the promises of God. Uh, you know you had to have something that uh, when folks are backing up over great big red stones in front of Target and sit right there like they ain't ran over nothing. I mean you got to have something to be able to drive these days. Is there anybody here that's glad that you got something that's held you on to Jesus? What I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters, is that you're going, if you're going to make it on this Christian journey, you got to have something down on the inside. I heard the saints of old say, take the Lord with you everywhere you go. I mean, when you get in the car, you better ask Jesus to get in that car with you because you don't know what's down the road. Guess why many people have not been able to touch their pastors. They didn't stop them from touching God. Uh -huh. Yeah, I got preachers who told God that they would preach even if they had to preach by themselves, had to preach in churches when nobody would say amen and look right into a camera as if that was the congregation. Uh, listen, when you mean business with God, even in the midst of challenges, even in the midst of opposition, you can hold on and hang in there because after a while, God is going to bring you out. All right. So now that the world has been flipped upside down, we can see who 
were the true believers, uh -huh. uh, rather than those who were just talking, amen. Uh, before everything started popping off, everybody was testifying and talking loud. But now we see who the true believers are because the fact of the matter is that some people sat down uh, uh, when the pandemic hit and it got back up yet. Uh, uh, yeah, they lost all of their conviction, lost all of their stability, they lost all of their get up and go. Uh, you got to have some get up and go if you're going to be a soldier of the cross. I can't use you to sit down. Somebody need to get up from sitting down. Uh, some people sat down and all their morals went straight out the door. Uh, some people sat down and all their respect and their sense of responsibility went right out the door. How in the world, uh, after all the time when you couldn't go anywhere, uh, you couldn't hold on uh, to anything. Uh, uh, but the sad reality is that uh, somebody who didn't know who God is, uh, amen, you're starting to see them draw closer to those or draw closer to God than those that said they knew who he was. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about they came to church, they ran and shouted, but still did not know who Jesus is. Is there anybody listening to me that can say that since I've been through the past 15 months, I really found out that I really do know him. I really do know him in the pardon of my sins. I really do know him deep down in my heart. And I'm not going anywhere. I don't care what the devil throw at me. I don't come. I don't care what comes or hell or hot water. I'm going to stay with the Lord. And so the problem is with just finding out who was really real and who was fake. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why you can't focus on what a person is really saying. Because that does not prove that you know who God is. Uh, yes, uh, the proof is in the pudding. Uh, the proof that you know God is when you can trust God uh, and hold on to God uh, when times get hard and tough. Uh, and, yeah, and when everything is pulling at you uh, and telling you to figure this thing out in your own way. Uh, but when you can take yourself uh, out of yourself uh, and really subject yourself to God uh, and say that God, no matter how this thing works out, uh, I'm still going to trust you. Uh, I'm still going to be still uh, and I'm going to wait on God. Uh, if y'all waited on God, uh, then why can't I? Uh, I don't know how you feel about it tonight, but I don't have time uh, uh, in this season for quick fixes uh -huh, and time to keep stuck and ready to keep going back to scratch uh, because you do know that's what happens uh, when you got quick fixes and you try to patch stuff up. Uh, eventually you got to go right back to where you started from. Uh, so it's better to do it God's way uh, than no way I was going to in this house. Uh, I'm going to live my life uh, the way that God said. Uh, I may hurt. Uh, I may have to go through some pain. Uh, but I heard the Bible say uh, that the suffering of this present time uh, is not worthy to be compared uh, to the glory which shall be revealed. Uh, I wish somebody would help me in this house. Uh, what I'm going through right now uh, is a temporary situation. Uh, but late in the midnight hour, uh, the God that I serve, uh, he Where God is going to allow you 
you. How you gonna know what's inside of you if you don't go through no fire? Yeah, the saints are not exempt from going through things, but we have something that the world does not have, and that's we have an anchor in Jesus Christ. But you gotta be mindful of what you tune into, because in the midst of opposition, the devil will tell you that if is so good. Why did your loved one die? If God is so good, then why did you get sick? If God is so good, then why is time so hard for you? I'll be the first one to say there are some things about God that I trust him about. I still don't understand right now. But I believe I understand it better. Hallelujah. Bye and bye. I don't know when bye and bye is going to be, but he's going to help you don't understand it huh? better by and by. Huh? There are some things about tomorrow huh? that I still don't understand. Huh? But Brother Demetrius, the thing that I'm glad about huh? is because while I don't know what tomorrow holds, huh? I know who holds tomorrow. Huh? Yes, sir. And God is in your tomorrow right now. Huh? So by the time I get to my tomorrow, huh? he's already working oh, huh? right that thing out. Huh? Don't you know God can step out of time huh? and into your future huh? and work it out? Huh? Did you feel? 
belly. I've come to tell you, God is going to breathe you out. Lord, have mercy. I can still praise him with tears in my eyes. I can still praise him in the midst of my storms. I can still praise him in the midst of trials and tribulations. Why? Because God is a keeper. Yes, he is. Now, why is he keeping me? I'm glad that you asked. Because he's keeping me from every demon. He's keeping me from every devil that's trying to stop me. On my way to my promise. Uh, you know, and let me tell you something. Uh, not only uh, is God keeping me, uh, but He's delivering me. Uh, he's bringing me out. Uh, come here, brother David. Uh, David says uh, in the text uh, that I help uh, is not uh, not in Capitol Hill. Uh, I help uh, is not in Raleigh, uh, but I help uh, is in the name of the Lord. Uh, and you got to learn. Uh, I really know. Uh, I deal with this text later. Uh, when times get rough, help me out, Brother Nick. We're going to drive this thing. And you got to learn when times get hard. You got to know who's name to call on. I mean, I love the fact that my last name is called. I love my heritage. I love the DNA. Everything that it takes to be a cop. But when you're in trouble, I can't call on a cop. But I got to call on the name. You may be down, but somebody in here, you ought to know how to call on them. Because let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you something, sister. My help is in the name of the Lord. And since my help is in the name of the Lord, I got good news. Because somebody say good news. Good news. Good news. We coming out. Coming out of this.
grab a mason jar. Yeah. And nowadays we use it, you know, for decoration. But 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 so squeeze it back. If you were from the road, they would put pears, all types of fruits, vegetables, stout beans. Stuff in this in, in this mason jar, and and, and, and and though things were going well right then, trust me, I remember we eating good in Saul Street, uh, eating ham hocks. Yeah, we were. Yeah, somebody knows something about some pork chops. Uh huh. Uh, somebody knows something about. Yeah, we had all the fixings. Hallelujah. But 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 they knew there was a time that was coming, so they would tighten that. Tighten the cap, the top, and that top, but they would get tight. Set it up on the shelf. And that sometimes would pile up on those basic jars because time would come. But if a hard time came, we, if, you, if you found yourself where you didn't have enough, somebody would wonder why, how we gonna make it through this situation? Grandma or big mama or big mama or auntie or granddaddy or whoever will say, go grab me one of them jars. You come on, pop up one of them jars and you would have some preserves. I'm talking about when they used to make some homemade biscuits. Boy, yeah, yeah, see, I'm, 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 I'm not that young, uh, but, or oh, that senior, but I know about sometimes, you know, a, a good meal only had to have was some greens. Get somebody to get some cornbread. And give me just a piece of some fat back. And that was a meal. Why? Because they knew that times were coming. Where things might not be as well as they are. What are you trying to say, Brother God? God has got some of us in, as it were, in those mason jars. And you think because of the storms of life, you think because of the trials and the tribulations, you think because of the, the bad doctor's reports, you think because your bills are like hills, that things will never get better. But just when you feel like you're in God's going to unscrew that top. You know when you unscrew that top, you hear that And when the top is untrue, you hear that <laughs> They're pretty good. <laughs> they brought you back. They'll come on. But after the pop, after the top is popped, and God brings you out, folks gonna say, "Lord, have mercy." I thought you, I thought you were sick. <laughs> I thought you lost your job. You were trying to figure out how to pay your bills. And whenever God brings you out, this is the only thing that you got to say when they ask you, "How you make it?" Yeah, yeah, because God preserved you. He'll keep you. We're going to close on tonight with God. He is a keeper. Yeah, I, I, I think somebody needs to know that God is keeping me. I think somebody needs to know that God is keeping me. Sometimes it don't feel good. But God oh, He's keeping me. Come on, too.
why don't you come? If you if you on the internet, if you on our cyber sanctuary, you can send close parties to overall we can see Apex. But on the website, we that Gmail account, we will have someone to minister to you. If we have someone tonight that needs prayer, need a little bit more to get you through the rest of this week, come on, come to this altar. Come on, come on to this altar. Will there be more? Come on here. If you need why don't you come? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Will there be another? Will there be another? Yeah. 
love you.